Hello, my name is Walter Bach, and welcome to my series of circuits from scratch and beyond. We're going to analyze uh, DC circuits and AC circuits in this series. Um, but we're going to, before we are going to take care of the beyond thing, we are going to have to start from scratch. So take this, take care of the scratch first. Right? Okay. Um, in order to be able to analyze circuits or any kind of concept, you need to know the basics. So uh, we need to know what we are dealing with. Uh, so uh, we're going to take it from really, really low level and uh, we can take it as high as we can. This could be uh, just like the never ending soap opera. Anyway, uh, all right. So first thing that we need to understand when we're dealing with circuits is the concept of voltage. Voltage. If you uh, uh, Google the definition of voltage, you are going to see something like uh, voltage is the difference of potentials. Now, do you know any more uh, about that? Uh, well, at first I didn't, but uh, let's just keep going. After, let's see if you understand more about this sentence after we we go through what we have to go through here now. Okay. So uh, voltage, let's use some analogy. And I'm going to use some analogy because uh, I think it's the best way of explaining things. Um, that gets to people's heads. It's just my style. Right? So I'm going to use the analogy of dogs to present you the idea of voltage and what happens actually with electricity. Uh, so that analogy is going to help you understand the concept of voltage, current, and resistance. And then we are going to analyze what's happening in uh, uh, conductors and insulators and the combination of thereof. Okay. So analogy of dogs. And if anyone asks me why dogs, I'm going to give you the, uh, an argument that really cannot be beat. Why dogs? Why not? All right. Let's just keep going with this. Imagine there is a cliff on one side. Let's see, that's a cliff here. And it just goes down and down. Now there's another cliff on the other side. Here and here. That's a cliff. And that's a cliff. And the river flows through it. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. On one side of the cliff, there are a bunch of dogs. What dogs, you might ask? Let's say there are Chihuahua dogs, because uh, they're the most lively ones of them all that I know. And we're going to visualize those dogs with those little blue circles. That's just a bunch of them. Right? So that's where the little Chihuahuas are sitting here. On the other side of the cliff, uh, let's say we have, um, what do dogs like? Let's say there's a bucket here with the dog treats. Right, there are some dog treats, a lot of them here. Now, the dogs see these dog treats, these dog treats, and now they want them. So what happens already? Immediately what happens? Dog little doggies, they see the dog treats, they really want that. What happens? What happens is that there is a huge amount of attraction that happens between the dogs and the dog food or dog treats. One thing I want to point out, the little doggies, they can move because they are lively things with legs and everything. And the dog treats, it's a thing. It doesn't move, it just stays there. Important concept to remember. Now, the dogs really want that dog treat, those dog, these dog treats, but they can't get there, so they're sad. Really sad, they're sad little things here. And they have little frowny faces. Right? Poor dogs can't get to the treats. Well, let's help them out. Let's build a bridge. So that there is a, all of a sudden, kaboom, there is a bridge that happens right between these two cliffs. There's a bridge. 
just to visualize the surface of that. Now the bridge is just a nice one solid surface. It's wide enough for them to get through. And all of a the sudden they, these little doggies, they see the dog treats and now they have a play, they have a way to get to that happy place. Okay? Now let's just stop for a second here. They are still hungry, so they're upset. They're not angry, but they're a little upset that they are hungry and they are not eating yet. So, because they're sad, there's a lot of negativity happening here. A negativity happening here, a lot. Now, this, uh, these dogs see that those, the bucket with the dog treats, and uh, they see it as a happy place. So let's say that there's a lot of positivity going in here. We're going to mark it with a little plus. So negativity marked with the minus, positivity marked with the plus. We have the attraction that goes there. Now, some people like to explain the voltage as the uh, as, as pressure, and um, there's nothing wrong with that uh, pressure. And um, there's some comparisons with voltage to a water or electricity to water. Yes, there, there, there's some nice things about comparing that. But uh, what it really is, it's that there's no pressure. Nobody is pushing them on, into those dots. They want it. So there's attraction. I think attraction is the better uh, way of explaining this. Okay. So now, <clears throat> what happens is their voltage. Voltage really is the attraction between the little doggies here and the happy place. Negative place, lots of negative, lots of sadness, positivity, lots of happiness here, okay? So voltage could be viewed as a attraction. Okay? So here's an attraction. What happens when the dog, little doggies see the bridge? Not even better, what I'm going to show you. Let's say some, in some magical way, there were already some doggies here on that bridge. And so there's a little bit of a connection between them. Now, this little doggy here sees that, you know, those dog trees, sees the bucket here and wants to get there, sees the happy place, wants to get to the happy place. The other guy sees this guy, follows him, and they just follow him. So the movement happens. There's a movement of little doggies that are sad and they want to go to the happy place. So there is a movement. Okay. Things are moving. Things are moving. So therefore, in electrical terms, we can call it as a current. Current. So voltage, attraction, things are moving, current, movement. Now, let's say there, is, there are no obstacles in the, on, on, on this bridge. The surface is very uh, nice, solid, smooth. There's nothing to stop them. What is going to happen? There's going to be a lot of movement because there's, nothing, there's no obstacles that the doggies have to uh, uh, go through. Uh, so, uh, we can see that the current is high when, um, when the doggies are moving with nothing to stop them. Now, let's see, let's say just for the sake of this lesson or the presentation, say there's a little bit of grass growing here, green grass on this bridge, just a little bit, tiny bit of like green grass. What's going to happen, those little chihuahuas, they're going to have a little tiny bit of a harder time to get from this place to this place because now they have to overcome that tiny bit of a grass. So the solid, the surface is not as solid as it used to be. So what is it? That the doggies have to overcome a little bit of something that's called a resistance. So now, we're just transferring the analogy of the doggies to the electrical terms. We have, what do we have? Let's just use a different color here. We are dealing with voltage. We're dealing with current. And we're dealing with resistance. Okay. 
So the voltage is the amount of attraction uh, between the doggies and the dog food. The current is the amount of movement that uh, the attraction is going to cause. And the resistance is a quantity that is going to try to stop the movement. So the bigger the resistance, uh, let's see, let's use just colors here. Okay. The bigger the resistance, the smaller the current. Right? Now, the bigger the voltage, the bigger current. Because if those dogs are more attracted to that, they're going to try to run faster. If they're less attracted, maybe they don't care as much, they're not going to move that fast. Now also, if there is a bigger resistance, later on you're going to understand that, the voltage or the attraction is going to be bigger as well. Because if the resistance is so high that they want that, but they can't get there, then they want it more. So there's going to be bigger attraction. They just want more something that they can't get. Right? So let's say the grass is taller. So the glass is, grass is taller. Uh, then the resistance is going to be greater, which means it's going to cause less movement. Or the movement is going to be slower because the little doggies are going to have to overcome the, um, the resistance. Right? So now we have the concept, if we, if we talk about the electrical terms. Let's say this is the positive, let's just we call it the positive place. Whatever forms the positive place is the positive terminal of this whole environment. And this is the negative terminal of this whole environment. The negative terminal has little doggies, but let's forget about the doggies. Let's just call them the electrons. Electrons. Electrons or electrons. Electrons can move. The positivity is just there. It's just a happy place. So the electrons want to go to the happy place. That's what causes the voltage because there's attraction. And then what's caused it causes the current because there is a movement. And uh, nothing is perfect in life, which means they're going to overcome maybe a little bit of resistance, or maybe they're going to have a little bit more obstacles, so they're going to have overcome more resistance. And the more resistance they're going to have to overcome, the slower they're going to move, obviously. Right? Now, let's take care of the units. Voltage, uh, let me draw some lines here. Uh, what color should I use? Let's just use white. Uh, yeah, draw some lines. So things are a little bit more clear. Now we have a table all of a sudden. Let's talk about units. You can go down the history lane and find out who those people were, uh, who invented those, or invented, who uh, discovered those qualities and uh, invented the names for it. However, uh, when those little, sorry, when those gentlemen who discovered the quantities, um, when they did that, the quantities were named with their names. So let's say voltage was named after Alessandro Volta, but we're just going to say that it's a volt. Volt, that's the unit of voltage. Current, there was somebody else at some different time, uh, and that person's name who discovered the current and the, anything that goes with it, Was Mr. Ampere. And the resistance is associated with the last name of a person whose last name was Ohm. Let's just get a little bit more space here. Now, these are the last names of the people who were dealing with that. How does this translate into the units that we are going to use? Oh, it translates like this. The voltage is represented with the unit of volt, V. And 
I usually put the units in the square brackets. Ampere, amp, amp, square bracket, amp. How many amps flows through this conductor? How many amps flows through this branch? Uh, and that is represented with the capital letter of A. Stands for amps. One amp, two amps, and so on. And ohms are represented with the unit of the Greek letter of omega. And I put square brackets to it. Always keep, always remember to include the units beside the quantities, beside the numbers. When you do your calculations, please include the units because if you don't include the units, you're going to end up with something like this. Now let's say, 12. 12 what? 12 apples? 12 carrots? No. Let's say this uh, is, we're calculating current, so we're going to say 12 amps. Okay. Or let's say 500. 500 what? Or 500 of what? I don't want to say 500 what because that's a different. 500 of what? Uh, 500 ohms. And I will show you a little trick of how to draw the little omega letter. Um, so uh, let's say here, um, just draw a little couple of horseshoes like this and just join them with a circle or a semicircle. And you can do it quite quickly. So that's 500 ohms. So now you have the, you know, uh, the resistance uh, represented with the units. All right, so just uh, lower the light a tiny little bit more here, just so we can uh, see the writing on the glass. There we go. So with this lesson, you have discovered what is voltage, what is current, and what is resistance. Voltage is the attraction between the two terminals. There's a lot of sadness here, negativity, and the negativity was repre represented with the little negative electrons, electrons. And the happy place is just represented with positivity. We are going to draw power supplies such as this, that will be DC power supply. And this is going to be labeled with positive, and this terminal is going to be labeled with negative. So this is the positive terminal of the DC power supply. This is the negative terminal of the DC power supply. And from there, we can draw a bunch of circuits and whatnot. Uh, we're going to go over that uh, in the following lessons. So we know what voltage is. The voltage is the attraction, is the amount of attraction, in my words, amount of attraction between one terminal and another. Okay. Current is the amount of movement. So the voltage is measured with the units, uh, is represented with the units of volts. Current is the amount of movement that goes through a circuit and uh, is represented with the units of amps or amperes. Uh, do they write it here? Ampere, ampere, there we go. Uh, and the resistance is uh, represented with the ohms. And that usually, you, sometimes you're going to see the letter, the, 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 actually the word ohm, how many ohms, one ohm, two ohms, and so on. Uh, or if you're going, you might see the little uh, Greek letter of omega, it's the same thing. Uh, all right, so now, okay, let's get back to that difference of potentials. Let me just make a little bit more space here. Oh. Uh, it's too wet. All right, let's get rid of this. What was going to show you? Oh, the difference of potentials. Another way to explain what difference of potentials is, let's say you have one place. Can we see things? Yes, we can see still. I'm just looking around because that's where my monitor is. And here's another place. 
And let's say this is a happy place. Another way of explaining it. This is a happy place. There's a lot of happiness happening here. A lot of positivity, a lot of happiness. So we're just gonna give you those big pluses. And uh, let's say this other place here. Well, um, maybe there's just a little tiny bit of happiness. So there is happiness here and there's happiness here. Hmm? Well, but let's talk about difference of potentials. So there's a lot more happiness here than here. So the potential of happiness is more with this place than it is with this place. So this potential of happiness is greater than the, this potential of the happiness. So this potential is different than that one and that creates the difference of potentials. Let's say with a reference to ground, this potential sits at 12 volts. And let's say this potential with a reference to ground sits at six volts. What is the difference of these potentials? Well, the difference because the ground, let's say ground here, can I see it? Yeah, the ground sits at zero volts. So with the, the difference of potentials between this place and that place, this terminal and that terminal, is 12 volts, because this potential sits at zero volts, and this potential sits at 12 volts, so the difference of the potentials is 12 volts. This minus that. Well, same here. This sits at zero, this one sits at six. The difference between this potential and this potential is six minus that. So the difference, this one minus that. So that's six volts. Well, let's call this potential A. Let's call this potential B. And this is the potential G for ground. What's the voltage of between A and ground? Voltage between, uh, do I have space? What do I? Okay, um, voltage uh, of A, and we're going to just not write the ground, equals 12 volts. That's the potential. With reference to ground, the, uh, the, 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 the voltage of this potential here is obviously uh, voltage uh, at the point V equals to six volts. Right. But what's the voltage between A and B? Voltage, oops. The voltage between voltage between A and B equals the different, the volt potential, the, the, the voltage that sits at A minus the voltage that sits at B which is equal to 12 minus six. 12 minus six equals six. And what do we have? Volts. But sometimes you might be asked, what is the voltage between B and A? Well, it's simple. How simple is it? It is the voltage potential that sits at terminal B minus the voltage potential that sits at the terminal A, which equals six minus 12 equals minus six. All right, minus six volts. Right. So now, you know, when you see the definition that says voltage is the difference of potentials. Now you actually understand what is, you know, what the Wikipedia or Google is trying to tell you. Yeah. All right, so this was the very, very first conceptual presentation or lesson uh, that is going to start the wonderful world of circuits from scratch and beyond.
my name is Walter Bach and we just took care of the first scratch. Stay tuned for more. <laughs>